Hey guys, it's Anne. Welcome to the channel. If you are looking for a friendly, helpful worm community, you are in the right place. Today we're going to look at the European night crawlers in the half of a 55 gallon barrel. And we're going to go ahead and see what happened to the food we fed about three weeks ago, evaluate the bin and get them fed up. We just harvested, so pretty much sure this doesn't need harvesting at all. So we're going to leave that be and just fluff this part here where you can see the bedding on the top. If I go in close, you can see that I apparently have some green paper. I firstly thought it was sprouts, but it appears that something that we shred in the shredder is not something that the worms like and they pushed it all up to the top um, so it's weird if you guys notice that in your own bins let me know i mean i do have some sprouts but i do have whatever this green paper is that is apparently not edible for the worms so they're smart they just move everything to the top that's not good for them and then i scrape it off and throw it in the proper garbage all right let's get you settled in and take a look at the bin Okay, I just went by and picked out as much of that green paper as I could find, and I'm still seeing more. Luckily, the worms are going to go ahead and move that out of the way for me, and so I will have an opportunity to get it out of there again. I don't actually recall what we had that was that color green, so it's kind of a, a mystery uh, plastic, I guess. So let's look in here and see how the worms are doing. Well, here we go. We've got a avocado pit that is already super soft and squishy, so they have been working hard. Now, today what we're looking at is just regular bin maintenance of the wedge system. And it is coming into winter here, not really winter, but it's fall. And it's down to about 60 degrees Fahrenheit in the basement here. So the worms are going to start slowing down a bit uh, when it gets a little bit colder. Here in Illinois, in the United States where I live, the weather kind of goes up and down and up and down in October. Sometimes it could be very, very hot still, and it could also snow. <laughs> so if you live in an area like that where when it comes to the change of seasons, you do not have any assurances as to what you're going to get, put that in the comments below because that's what I'm running into right now. Last time when we were in the bin, this was super muddy. It started to dry out a little bit, um, which is good, but I'm in that situation where I don't want to actively try and make it drier because I know in less than a month, the furnace is going to be on and I am going to be fighting tooth and nail to keep the moisture high enough for the worms. So that's kind of a fight where I am here in what we call the Midwest. So I'm just going to kind of push this part that I'm fluffing up to make room for the, the next feeding and also kind of get a little bit of uh, real estate here for the feeding and make sure it's all fluffed up. Looks really good. The texture of everything looks really good and healthy. Um, we're in kind of a building stage as far as the population goes. Um, I did donate a little over a pound of worms um, to Jason and Colleen, which I had forgotten about when I kept thinking that the, the possum came in here and ate a bunch of worms, and I was a little upset about that. But now that I remember that some of those worms actually went to a good home, I'm less, less w worried about the fact that the you know, possum ate that many worms. Um, it wasn't me. So, okay, good. We've got some room here. Everything looks good. I'm gonna move you a little closer and maybe we can take a peek and see what the feeding is doing from last time. Last time they kind of got my canning scraps and uh, so they got some peppers and tomatoes and things like that which are perfectly fine for the worms. They do not perceive capsation the way that we do. And um, the tomatoes are fine as well. Let's see, do we have a worm ball? No, we don't have a worm ball, but that's pretty good concentration of worms there. But 
uh, being that uh, it's been three or four weeks, really, since the last time I fed them, it's not really to be expected that we would get a nice, pretty worm ball. We'll put all the dry stuff over here. And start moving. Look at that. That's so cool. That's a stem from a cabbage or a broccoli. I'm glad they're getting to eat something because although I got cabbage, I did not get any broccoli. The, the bugs got the broccoli. And, and not the good bugs that helped me. The bad bugs. But uh, I can't remember who called it the nature tax on gardening. So whatever you lose is kind of your, your tax for nature. Um, so I, I can live with that. I will just have to find a way around it next year. If you have trouble with broccoli and stuff like that, let me know. How do you work, get around that? How do you manage to get a crop? I put the uh, that screen stuff over the top of my cabbages, and that worked really well. But the... Um, the broccoli and the cauliflower were, and the Brussels sprouts were too tall. And so that wasn't really an option, um, at least with what I had purchased already. I might have to get something that's, that's taller because um, those plants are way taller than cabbage. All right, uh, let's get them some food and some more bedding. First things first, they're going to get some corn uh, tostadas. My husband bought the wrong brand and they just didn't taste right. I'm, I'm accustomed to getting the ones in the Spanish package with the Spanish writing that come in like a cellophane and uh, have like a little kind of like clampy thing. I don't know what the name of the brand is, but those are amazing. And this uh, generic brand that you uh, often buy at the store uh, just didn't taste right to me, so the worms are getting it. The dragon fruit that I grew from a seed is doing exceptionally well, so much so that I had to prune it to get it in the house. So, and then we're also going to be seeing some jade plant that I had to prune to get in the house. It's getting to be that season. I can't trust uh, that it won't frost in the next week. So, unfortunately, everything needed a haircut and had to come in. So they're gonna get, you know, the trimmings of my bonsais and my house plants, as well as uh, some radishes and peppers and tomatoes. So this is a decent feeding for them, especially as we move into the cooler season. This prepared bedding doesn't actually have any coconut coir in it. It is just shredded cardboard. And also, in addition to the cardboard, the, the water that I use to get it wet has got the seaweed extract in it. I think that kind of just helps the, uh, the bedding break down a little bit. All right. Now, we're not going to get a full check-in on the lower level, but uh, I am going to sneak in one corner and try and get them some food. Okay, we're going to try and do this very delicately so as to not to upset the spiders. After all, they've got a job to do. So the, this bin's gonna get sort of the same thing that the other bin did. Maybe a little heavier on the plant clippings. But we're just gonna try and not disrupt the spider webs. No fluffing whatsoever. Hopefully their webs are sort of uh, attached to the side. I can see them scurrying away from me here. But, uh, so there we go. The bottom bin will get the rest of the bedding here. And again, I'm trying to be super careful. Uh, there's really no better solution for pest management than um, spiders. Uh, this is not in the regular part of the house where I live, so I'm not letting, you know, a whole lot of spiders run amok where I live. Um, luckily I have super tall ceilings and it's really not an issue because they stay out of, of the same height that I walk at. I'm only 5'5 five five, and the ceilings are like 9 feet. So the spiders and I don't usually get in each other's way. 
So if you like this video, give it a muddy thumbs up. If you're not a member of my worm family, click that subscribe button. And if you want to know what I'm doing when I'm doing it, ring that bell icon. I will be linking the playlist for the European Nightcrawlers over there. And then someplace over here, I will have a video that YouTube thinks that you in particular will like more. Okay, guys, thanks for hanging out with me and my worms and my arachnids. And everybody, have a good day.